go. I think we are a go. Let's see. Yes. Welcome, everybody, to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room for another amazing Mash and Journey Club Barrel Pick. We are here with some special guests. Uh, first, I got to got to talk to my partner in crime. What's going on, Scotty? How's it going, brother? Yeah, happy to be doing this one. This is unique. This isn't this is a little little outside of the uh, my wheelhouse. That's for sure. But uh, just going off of the regular duality, I'm super excited to get into these. So appreciate the opportunity from ASW to allow us, uh, you know, to, you know, kind of opportunity to do this. So yeah, I told Scott, I was like, hey, Scott, we're picking a double malt. Ah! Oh, no, uh, I was. I've, I've learned. I've learned my lesson a little bit to to kind of pump the brakes and not just kind of discredit things. I mean, I gotta. I like getting a little bit outside the the comfort zone, and this will definitely be that. I mean, coming off just the regular eighty eight proof uh, duality, I really enjoy that, and just kind of so far nosing these samples that uh, that you sent. I'm I'm super excited for this one. So um, I think this will be a great. I think this is kind of what we've been wanting to do is get these kind of different things you know, out to, to everybody who supports us and, you know, part of the, the whiskey club. So pretty excited for this one. Yeah. And, uh, for those of you who have not, uh, had any, anything ASW or heard about it, you're about to, uh, go for a wild ride here. So, um, it's going to be awesome. Uh, we have, so the guy up, uh, up on the screen next to me, that is a uh, patron William Wiley, who's also, um, brought him in because he is not only, uh, just a, you know, great guy and patron got to meet him in a, uh, to Chattanooga for the meetup uh, last year, but uh, he's a big fan of ASW. He's he's been there. He's close to the distillery. He you know, he's I think he's tried every single product they have. <laughs> so I figured uh, let's bring William in as our uh, as our third taster. We had enough of a sample set to uh, send some to him. So what's going on, man? Uh, not too much. Started the day off with the Duality eighty eight proof, which is also amazing. Can't wait to uh, to get into these samples. Uh, yeah, well, thanks. Definitely, thanks for uh, taking the time to help us out, man. Really appreciate you know yeah. you have that you have that ASW uh, palette all set to go. Uh, <laughs> and then down here in this corner, just below me, that is Mr. Whit Hageman himself. He is a distiller uh, now. He just got recently promoted to distiller over at ASW. So, congrats to you on yes, that. Yes, congrats. congrats. <laughs> So, uh, so Wit, I'll let you kind of introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about ASW for those of the folks in the chat um, watching who has not heard of the distillery quite yet or got to try any of their uh, any of their amazing whiskeys that you guys have been crafting. So, take it away. Sure. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Wit. I'm a distiller at ASW. Uh, ASW is a distillery located in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we have been around since. 2015, so we're coming up on making whiskey for almost seven years. Um, we are a small craft distillery, um, and we do everything with traditional pot stills. Uh, we have tons of various products. We like to really not just focus on making American style whiskey, but making whiskey uh, with different styles all over the world and bringing in that uh, American flair with it. Uh, the traditional pot stills are ran by master distiller Justin Manglitz, who's been making whiskey more than 20 years. Uh, he makes some real kick-ass whiskey, and uh, luckily, he decided he wanted to teach me how to make some kick-ass whiskey. So uh, he's been teaching me and training me now for uh, been making mash there for almost three years, and uh, he's been teaching me how to distill for about a year, and uh, recently promoted me from assistant to distiller to a distiller. So I'm learning how to make these various products. Uh, the product we'll be tasting tonight is called Duality. It is what we call a double malt whiskey. If you go to uh, the TTB standards, yep, Jason has some right up there. Bloop, bloop. Uh, we'll, bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Duality is a what we call a double malt whiskey. TTB standard would just call it whiskey though. Um, it is equal parts 50% malted rye and 50% malted barley. The malted barley is smoked with a cherry smoke malt, which gives it a little bit of this sweet smoky flavor. It's not peated in no way, shape or form. So some people say, oh, I don't like peated whiskey. This is not a peated whiskey. So uh, it is malted barley that is smoked with cherry wood. So you are gonna have a little bit of that smokiness, but you're not gonna get those earthy medicinal tones that you're gonna get out of peat. Um, that not everyone seems to uh, enjoy. So duality, we like to think of it as kind of like a crossover whiskey. This is something that a traditional bourbon drinker can pick up 
and start to appreciate some gentle smoke notes that they might find in a malt whiskey because this is aged on, in new oak. Um, but it's also something that a traditional scotch drinker might be able to pick up and take those malty characteristics and start appreciating maybe some of the flavors that you would get from rye um, that you would find in a lot of bourbons and American style whiskeys, rye style, rye whiskeys, obviously. Um, so this is what we like to think of as kind of like a crossover or bridge whiskey that can bring uh, two parties or two different whiskey cultures that have sometimes butted heads and kind of bring them together. Um, trying to make something that works beautifully together too, not something that clashes because that's very common when you start trying to mix together. A lot of people have tried to mix together uh, scotch and bourbon and got this kind of this clash of flavors. Mm -hmm. So the cherry smoke malt really kind of brings it together in a beautiful way. And Justin crafted this and made it into a fantastic whiskey. Yeah. Uh, and I thought just because, so Scott definitely, you know, we've talked about this at length. He has a little bit of an aversion to malt malty maltiness so the fact that i mean he really liked this uh the duality yeah. i think pretty much nails what you guys are going for kind of that nice crossover be between what scotch lovers like and what bourbon lovers like kind of bringing together um the interesting part is the in front of scott if you look on the right you have the black label duality which mm -hmm. is there what is that 88 proof yeah so it's an 88 proof uh, offering which actually has a little bit more fruit and malt to it you get to these cast strength versions like uh, I mean, Will showed you earlier with the lighter label. And now this is where you get some of the heavy chocolate coffee, some of those those really rich, deep, dark notes uh, that we cannot wait to taste uh, tonight. Um, also with ASW, these guys are, are crafting everything under the sun. So um, if you've ever heard of an Irish whiskey here being made in the uh, United States, uh, ASW's got one. It's called Druid Hill. You can't call it Irish whiskey. You can call it an Irish style whiskey, though. But it is a triple pot still whiskey. The the master distiller um, has uh, Irish descent. And why don't you tell that little bit of a story why this was created? Yeah, absolutely. So our uh, master distiller, Justin Menglitz, um, like I was saying earlier, he likes to craft different types of whiskey. Um, he grew up, uh, he's been making whiskey for over 20 years. And uh, he grew up making uh, a little bit of whiskey and then making a lot of beer. And uh, one of the things that from his Irish descent, his favorite whiskey uh, was always Irish whiskey, you know, originally because it was kind of a smoother introduction into whiskey. And then later on, you know, there are certain uh, complexities that you'll find in certain Irish whiskeys. Uh, he loves what he says, the old green spot. So this was like the old label green spot. Uh, like older production, maybe more of like a dusty, if you will. Uh -huh. um, but that's his, his favorite whiskey. So when he was making the Druid Hill, uh, he was wanting to make a triple distilled Irish style whiskey. And we actually sourced malted barley directly from Ireland. We put in a portion of unmalted barley. So we're talking 70% malted, 30% unmalted. Um, and it's really going to give it that traditional bready characters that you're going to get in it. We age it on new oak though, and that gives it kind of that American flair. You're gonna get a little extra sweetness, a little extra honey. We're gonna be able to do it in a since we're a craft distillery, be able to do it in a uh, a shorter time frame in that three to four year time frame, and be able to have like a fully mature, uh, really sweet oaky and, and, Irish uh, style whiskey. And, and William, what did you what did you say? What did you say earlier that <laughs> the color on this? I mean, uh, when, when's the last time you saw an Irish whiskey? that like a young irish whiskey that's that color i mean yeah because the oldest irish whiskey i have is the jameson 18 bow street which 18 years and it's not even close to being that dark yeah, exactly so this is a like super hyper flavored um uh irish whiskey um, well here's to oh, here, here's to the irish style whiskey that's right <laughs> <laughs> uh we're gonna call the cops um oh yeah we have the, uh, they also make this. They have a heavily peated expression too. For all you guys that like the peated uh, uh, peated malt called Tire Fire. Um, this is their Tire Fire single malt whiskey finished in rum casks. That's absolutely incredible. Um, they have the Resurgent Rye, which is a double, co a double copper pot still rye whiskey, um, rye malt whiskey. You have the Fiddler Soloist, which is, Probably one of you. That's the Fiddler uh, soloist and your Georgia Harwoods. Those are kind of your big award winners, correct? 
Yeah, well, so interestingly enough, our our biggest award winners have always been our single malts. Okay. Um, our single malts are really what have driven us the awards. However, uh, I would say that the Fiddler brand is kind of what's gotten out there the most. It's what we've really focused on because a lot of American uh, whiskey drinkers really focus on bourbon. So the Fiddler brand is our yeah, bourbon it's brand. Fantastic. So. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, this stuff's fantastic. And, you know, if you guys pay attention to Sealbox and if you shop on there, they've released – some single barrels uh, there. Yeah, yeah. Will's got one right there. Um, yeah. and now these, this, these is a, are, this is a single barrel. Is that what yours is, Jason? Yeah, I have a single barrel as okay. well. Right. Cast strength. Yep. Same here. So these are bourbon whiskey refinished with hand harvested char, uh, charred oak staves. So you get like that really nice little char to it. But that fancy um, bottle, it's almost like you distill it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so Witt's been on the show before we, uh, kind of talked early on before he was distiller, uh, before he had the, you know, the super grown up moniker now, but, uh, <laughs> we talked a little about, he's been really cool and sent, sent me some, uh, a couple of cool bottles to try, including that Druid Hill, uh, to kind of taste their uh, portfolio. But when the opportunity came up and we were like, man, what could we do? We've been getting some requests from the group, from the Patreon group, from, uh, you know, for both me and Scott. You know, if we could do something in a more of a malt category, and I'm like, what's more perfect than ASW uh, to kind of get that crossover? And even Scott was kind of like, uh, and then, yeah, then once he tasted it, he's like, oh my God, yeah, let's do this. So, yeah, yeah, uh, here we are. And if you guys have any questions in the chat for Wit, uh, just tag me and uh, I will make sure that I get that question to him if you want to learn any bit more about the distillery. But without further ado, what do say? Be real, real quick, real quick. There was one comment before from Trevor was asking in terms of uh, distribution. Oh, here we go. Roughly, there you go. Yeah, roughly. Roughly, yeah. Trevor. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, you have That's a, a great you question. Have an account? Yeah, sure. Yeah, how many? How many states are? Uh, how many states are we available in? So right now, uh, you can find us in the southeast in a lot of liquor stores, uh, Georgia, some Alabama, uh, some Florida some Tennessee. Uh, however, we are right now nationwide through uh, Sealbox. And uh, I think we have some on Wooden Cork as well, but through Sealbox, I think we're going to restock Sealbox to try to get some more on there because I was just informed that we are sold out of most of our stuff on Sealbox. <laughs> uh, but we're going to try to get that restocked. Uh, I will say that um, Soon, I think you'll be seeing us, and I, I, I don't know if I can share this information totally, but there, there's a very popular uh, liquor store chain that I think you'll be seeing us in uh, pretty soon, almost nationwide. Uh, so if if that news, I mean, we're we're, we're working on it now. We're, we're bottling a bunch of shit and getting it ready. So, uh, well, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we that's, should have it out. So I mean, that's, that's the, I mean, that that's also yeah. the nice part about like online stuff now is like I know the availability has changed so much that you know if it's not directly in your state, you know, I mean, just just check online. I mean, if you can get liquor shipped to your state, then you can get whatever the hell is generally available. So, you know, keep that in mind. Everybody. Yeah. And if you guys are looking to, uh, so yeah, so seal box is pretty much sold out of everything. And I, I know they have to restock, but they do have the, um, the ASW distillery called the Drambino sampler pack available. So if you guys want to try the Fiddler Unison, the, uh, resurgence ride the duality double malt and the tire fire heavily peated single malt you can get that whole taster pack for 40 bucks if you oh. want to taste four of their things so i'm actually going to throw this link in the chat so if anyone's awesome. interested in trying their stuff you can uh you can uh check it out so all right so um so let's uh let's let's dive into these boys i can't wait so we have four samples tonight um to taste through and and uh wit you know he pulled some sam we got these uh a while ago and uh wit pulled uh pulled these samples and they've been sitting in the barrel ever since there for another few months so yeah so they he might get a little bit of differentiality than we do but i'm curious whatever we like here whatever ends up being our favorite what wit has in his glass if it's getting Kevin getting even better, so we'll see how that goes. So yeah, this, yeah. Will, be, this will be interesting. I this had the opportunity really... to taste the original Thieved products that uh, I sent out to to Jason and the Mash and Drum crew, and then I have some updated samples uh, just for reference. Uh, these are smaller casks, 
Uh, they're 30 gallon casks. So sitting in the cask for an extra two months can really help the maturation and uh, improve the flavor qualities a lot. So, so I do want to say hi to, uh, to IC 86, pop them. Don't watch them's here. The average drinker, smoking fire water, Richie Z, Trevor Kunkel, um, IC 86. Yes, this is my Falcons hat. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Ben Talib is in the house. What's going on? Burr Ben. Uh, Burbens in the house. There he is. Uh, and then we have Cameron Lockers here. Elsa Marilio. She's she's down there in Georgia as well. Um, how about them dogs? How about them dogs? Yes. Congrats. And we said congrats to the uh, to the old uh, dogs last night on the channel. So yeah, that's right. You get that's a huge uh, huge win right there. Heck yeah. Taking down taking down the uh, taking down the Alabama. <laughs> Unfortunately, me being an electrical engineer, I'm a Georgia Tech fan, so I didn't really care for that one as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, hey, hey, what's up, Hendo? Yeah, Hen uh, Hendo's a huge fan of ASW. You guys, you know, Hendo has a pretty good pal of himself, so he's got good taste. I'll give it to you, man. Even though you're a Braves fan, and you gotta give me shit every yeah, year. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> uh, hey, two ten nineties here. What's going on? Hey, biking bourbons in the house. Um, uh, who else? Oh, Michelle Martin. I saw earlier. Uh, Chris is here saying first time live. Welcome in, Chris. All right. Let's start with number 29. We're going in. I'm sorry, 28. We're just going in number order here. So, yeah. Okay. All right. I got to get the, uh, the geeky notebook out. So hold on a second. We, we kind of pre, we kind of pre sniffed a few of these things too. Those are pretty <laughs> official. Uh, those are official terms, by the way, if you guys are wondering. Yeah. The old, uh, the old mash and journey pre sniff. Why not? Pre sniffer. Yep. Pre sniff. Oh man. The one thing for me is like so dominant is like this this like espresso bean note. It's just one thing I've I get like right away. It's so Oh man. This is probably more of a I can't I'm trying to like get my head around what fruit that is. This this has a fruity characteristic to it. It's what about a dates? Lighter and sweeter. It's a little bit lighter and sweeter. Maybe like dates. Oh, Wags, man. this is for you. Look at here come the super chats. <laughs> Jason and Scott, I have a fiddler, uh, Georgia Hartwood pick, but I really need that duality pick. If I miss this one, I will push my fingers into my eyes. Slip knot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Jesus, we don't want you to do hey, we'll we'll get you a bottle, okay? There, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, just relax, man. Relax. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't we don't we don't need any, anybody self yeah. uh, self hurting themselves. That's we don't we sure. don't need to see that on YouTube, thank God. No. Yeah. What about some citrus? Anybody get like a like an orange citrusy kind of note at all? I think that's what it is. I think it's lemon. Maybe maybe it's lemon. It's something citrusy. Yeah, it definitely smells more lemon than than orange. Yeah, I think I'm getting like lemon, like fresh lemon rind. I don't know what what what, what are you picking up with? Uh, yeah, so this one's gonna. I would definitely say that hit a little bit of the citrus notes. I would say that this uh -oh. citrus now it's moved a little bit. Those are like a sweeter, ci a sweeter citrus. Sweeter so citrus. I would say more of like a blood orange on this one, where maybe oh, originally yeah. it was going to be hitting like a lemon. I would say more of like a a sweeter, like blood orange. Going to get a little bit of that acidity, but it's not it's not an off acidity that you would attribute with a young bourbon. This is more like type of the multi acidity yeah. that you'd get with maybe like a like a 10, 12 year old scotch that exactly. has a little bit of that exactly. Acidity, so. Yeah, there's that's not like that. There's not that yeah. bitterness at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of, like a 10, 12 year old uh scotch for sure. Oh man. How how old are these? Like three, like two and a half, three years old? Uh old so years? so the no, these are a little over a uh, little over three, and then one's a little closer to four. Ooh. Um so yeah. yeah. Fine, can we find the four-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right, I'm cool. going in for a sip here, boys. All right, yeah. cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Oh, there's the there's the chocolate coffee. Oh yeah. Yeah, I definitely couldn't get it on the nose, but you can taste it on the palate. Yeah, the nose and the palate are completely different. Which agree, makes yeah. it which makes it interesting. What about like a little bit of like a burnt toast? Anyone get like a little bit of a burnt toast aspect? Abs absolutely. Yeah, so that's gonna be those like kind of multi qualities that you're yeah. gonna get uh, a little bit of like a breadiness. Um, yeah. I'm gonna say that 
even what what I tasted originally, what you guys are tasting now compared to like what the, what this one has done in about two months, um, I would definitely say that it's hitting a little more of um, maybe that bread turning into more of like a pastry. So you're going to get awesome. maybe what, what was originally like a, a burnt toast, more of like maybe a overdone pastry or muffin. So you're going to get a little oh, more sweetness. The yeah. chocolate's definitely going to start hitting yeah. um, maybe like one of those fancy ass like dark chocolates has like the citrus in it. So it's going to be oh, yeah. uh, on the palate. You're getting a little bit of that citrus, but it's going to be kind of toned down and uh, like you said, that that uh, chocolate flavor pro- profile is kind of like yeah, that nice like it. molasses and that um like um it's like a chocolate, it's like a dark chocolate, but I get that get that like a hint of toffee, and maybe that's some of the sweetness that's starting to show itself a little bit more for what Wit has. There's like a like a like a chocolate toffee thing happening, which is really nice. Yeah, there's something a little bit of like a. Like a, maybe like a like a cherry chocolate cordial or something a little bit about it. Mm. Will, what are you what are you thinking about this one? Yeah, Will's uh, Will's uh, he's pondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really get the the cherry, but yeah, it's just so weird how the nose is completely different to the palate. It's, it's completely different. This would uh, this would definitely throw you off in like a blind. Yeah, because there's no way in a blind that you would match those two up. Like, oh my god, it's delicious though. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's hitting a lot of really good notes. Um, mm. Man, this is only- definitely on the from when we first poured them. Like, was it been like 45 minutes now? It's the nose has definitely changed in that time too. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh man. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, those like kind of those like heavy, those more of those fruity notes are really starting to kind of come through that burnt sugar. It's almost like that top layer of like a creme brulee or that toasted part of it. Yeah, I mean you called it Scott. Burnt toast is is something I get on a lot of malt. Um, but yeah, when you get to the higher age scotches, that burnt toast. And Wit said it perfectly. It turns into like a burnt pastry almost, or an mm. overcooked pastry. If you like, leave like a croissant in the oven too long, and you get like that buttery sweet, you know, just a little bit charred. Yeah, yeah, it's hitting that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, is All it right. okay? Wit's like, yep, that's what I got in my glass. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you guys have any, um, uh, if you guys have any questions for for Wit. On ASW, uh, let me know um, in the chat. Get it over to him. Uh, Wit, what's um, as far as any any other? So you, I mean, you guys are making you're making Irish style whiskey. You're making peated malt. You're making rye. You're making bourbon. Making double malt. What is there anything else you guys have cooking up that you can talk about a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I could talk a little bit about like some of the stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, you know, so we we are trying to what we have right now as far as like. Um, all of our whiskey, um, we make, except we do source a little bit of MGP, a weeded MGP for our, uh, Georgia Hartwood and then our blended Fiddler Unison. So our Fiddler Georgia Hartwood, our, uh, blended Fiddler Unison, everything else, soloist, resurgence, we make in-house, we distill, we age, we bottle, and even the stuff that we source from MGP we like to um, do something to it. So like, we don't want to just take it out of a barrel that we sourced and put in a bottle. We either blend it with our own stuff or do experimental maturation with the Georgia hardwood aging it on Georgia Oak. Um, But we actually, right now the soloist is our only bourbon mash bill that we make. And the soloist is hundred percent pot stilled bourbon. Uh, But we are working on some other uh, bourbon mash bills that we are pretty excited about. So we have one that we already made it. Uh, close to two years ago. So that one should be uh, finishing up pretty soon. And then we have some more that we're probably going to be making soon. Uh, those will be under the the Fiddler line, but they'll be uh, probably labeled or advertised differently. So yeah, we're working on that. Uh, we are working on a wheat malt whiskey. Um, so it's going to be 100% malted wheat 
Oh. Um, and yeah, that's, that's something that, um, it's going to be a few years on that one. It's all, it's in the barrel, but we're going to give that one some time. Yeah. Weeders, uh, weeders generally need some time. Yep. That one's going to get a little time. Uh, it is a smoked, uh, wheat. So we, we like to kind of like, you know, play around with like some of the smoky stuff. So it's not going to be like a, like a soft wheat. It's sh- wheat. It should be uh, a little bit of that sweeter smoke. It's smoked with pecan wood uh, that was actually grown in Georgia. So it's Georgia wheat, Georgia pecan, um, Georgia distilled, everything Georgia. So, so is that what, is, <laughs> well, is that going to be considered a wheat whiskey or is it going to be a weeded bourbon? Cause you said a hundred percent, right? hundred percent. Yeah. So wheat, wheat whiskey. So uh, wheat malt whiskey, a lot of the things that we do, we like to do uh, use malted grains. Uh, there, there's a few reasons before that one is in the mashing process. The access to enzymes gives it a little easier conversion than using a cereal grain to start with. And the second reason is the complexity of flavors that you're going to get with a malted grain versus a cereal grain. So traditionally, a lot of cereal grains are used in making most American whiskeys, but we like to kind of mix it up and use uh, some malted grains that you would use maybe for beer making, but it's going to give you a more complex and sweet flavor profile. Um, And even the malting styles if you're using different styles of malting Mm -hmm. uh that can affect the flavor profile as well so we we like to kind of add that little extra layer into the craft and get some more unique flavors with that so 100 percent malted smoked wheat that's awesome and we always get this question when 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 are we gonna get this bottled already (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah hey hey, if you guys pick it i will i will put it on the, the the bottling schedule and try to get it get it bottled in you know a few weeks so Whenever, whenever oh. we're, whenever you guys are ready, we'll get a ball. Awesome. Yeah, see, Mary. Yeah, it's great to see new distillers. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, this is a goal of Scott and I's in the beginning. You know, if we, yeah. we could try some of this really unique stuff to get it out to our patrons and to our club uh, to try. It just exposes you guys to some really great whiskeys. Yep. Um, DL, what a great question. Do you have any casks that you haven't used yet that's on your radar? Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. So I actually just. I held on to a cask for a really long time. Uh, that was one of our soloist um, bourbons that we we had, and you know, it could have gone into a few batches of soloist, which usually our soloist hits about four year old for a bourbon. So this was actually um, getting close to five years, and uh, it was some. It was a bourbon that I really liked, so we actually released it, and we called it the Wit Ski Pick. So that's my <laughs> name's Wit W H I T, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone calls me Whitsky around the distillery. So, um, yep, Char- Charlie is who's one of our uh, one of our owners or CFO. He he, he loves calling me Whitsky. So the name just kind of sticks around. And uh, yeah, but we called it the Whitsky pick. Uh, we just released it, and we actually do have a, a few more bottles of that available. Um, is one of those that you know we released with a lot of other things. We released Justin's Master Distiller Select at the same time, which was a single barrel Druid Hill, which sold out pretty fast. Uh, at the time, I was an assistant distiller, so the assistant distiller pick, you know, wasn't selling as fast as the master distiller picked. Um, fair enough, but uh, you know, we have a few more bottles of that. But that's something that I think is one of the best whiskeys that that we had um, in house, and uh, one of the best barrels we had in house, and got to save it and bottle it for that time. But I mean, there's a few more that Justin and I, you know, we we kind of tuck away and hide, and you know, save save for uh, a special release. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw out that, you know, one of, one of these, uh, one of these was one of those that, I, you know, I kind of stuck around and, uh, you know, uh, probably, probably could have gone into some batches all, already, but I, I saved it for a special occasion. So saving the special that. stuff for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> we really appreciate it. So we're getting a, but, but, but we have to pick that one, right? <laughs> oh, I don't care. <laughs> if you don't, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be safe for one of my special occasions. So, <laughs> jeez, I feel the I feel the pressure to somehow select the one that's nah, gonna be. Nah. Like, <laughs> yeah, but, so yeah, now we we're going. It. So now we're going on to number twenty nine here, and this one, this one, I'm getting. There's a nuttiness to this one, along with like some vanilla pastry cream on this. Oh, uh, dude, I I have like this totally like rich vanilla bean, and yeah. and I even have like a little bit of like a root beer note to it. There's a little bit of a, a root beer kind of note. Yeah, total root beer float, man. Yeah, yeah I guess that's a, that's a good combo. Yeah, and it doesn't have like the fruit lemon note that the first one did. Not no, at all. No, this it's is... it's totally shifting now. Yep. 
this is this is much heavier, complex, a little more complexity starting to kind of shine here. Yeah, man, dude, you yeah. nailed that root beer. No, this is like one of those root beer, the old school root beer barrel candies. Yeah, very much. Yeah, this could totally be the root beer float pick. Yeah, <laughs> totally the root beer float. Oh, that's nice. That chocolate, uh, really nice too. While we're tasting through this, wit this is this is always a good question that comes up when it comes to barrel sizes. Cameron Lochner, uh, why thirty gallon barrels versus fifteen? Doesn't the fifteen gallon have same surface area as a fifty three? So, really good question. Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, we've actually used various sizes. Uh, we do have some stuff aging in fifteen gallon barrels. We have some stuff aging in fifty three gallon barrels. Majority of our product is fifty three gallon barrels. Now, when we started using the 30 gallon barrels, the main reason was just uh, the quality of the cooperage. So we were getting some barrels and we were using various sizes. And when we started using the 30 gallon barrels, we were seeing just astounding results. Uh, it, you know, and scientifically you could say this or that, you could say, oh, well, the surface area has increased a little bit with the, the 30 gallon barrel and you're getting, you know, more uh, contact for whiskey for wood. But I mean, really, I think a lot of it had to do with the cooperage and just what they were doing was just uh, really focusing in and getting that red layer with their charring and just uh, making some astounding barrels. So we started using some 30 gallon barrels for for a while. And then, uh, you know, we've kind of broke away from them just because we've wanted to, you know, increase our volume. We actually have started reusing some of our 30 gallon barrels for some of our single malts so that we have some stuff in uh, reclaimed reclaimed barrels. But uh, for the most part, I mean, these dualities when we were using them were like at the peak of when we were getting just some really kick-ass barrels. So we started using that just really for the quality of the cooperage, um, which you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot, especially in the whiskey world, you'll see a lot of just varying qualities when you're talking about cooperage. And that's not something that a lot of people on the uh, consumer side think about or, you know, talk about, but it's something that we see. Um, just in the production side of things, uh, just getting different barrels, getting barrel samples from different cooperages, smelling them, giving them some time and tasting them. And then if they're good, you know, uh, upping our order with these guys. So that's yeah. actually a really good point because that's something, I mean, even for myself, I've never really, you don't, you know, so for those of you watching, you think about it when you're, when you're going, when you're walking through a distillery, a craft distillery, whatever it may be, you see different, you know, barrel sizes. You know, I think, yeah, there's some science to that and surface area and maybe a little bit of the rapid aging process. But would you ever think in your mind, probably just because it's really good quality oak, you know, really good quality wood that's yeah. doing, you know, it's doing a service to what we're trying to create. Um, yeah. I think that's a, that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting way to look at it that maybe not so many people look at it in that way. Just the quality, you know, there's a there's a lot of coopers and guys just, you know, they're making thousands of bar barrels now each and every day. Uh, to keep up with the demand for distilled spirits. Um, so you, you would think, you know, as we've seen with whiskey, with so much demand for whiskey, you know, does quality go down a little bit? Probably happens the same a little bit with uh, wood too. So you really got to yeah. focus on getting like the best wood possible to age your spirits. And by the Absolutely. way, by the way, dude, 29. What yeah. the hell? It's so good. <laughs> It's almost like a there's almost like a chocolate malt like that rye really shines in this one I think. This is like if you took a mocha like a mocha latte coffee and you mm -hmm. poured it over chocolate ice cream with a little root beer. Yeah, Jason, I know you I know you love finishes like the finish on this one is pretty long too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah it is. Sure. Man. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's got that long linger. Oh man, this is 29 is uh and it, it, it finishes it finishes really like a heavy like vanilla kind of there I think too. And I yeah I get that slight little like fresh, um, what is it? Uh, like star anise, like a little bit of like that yeah. Like that, not not like that nasty black licorice note, but just like a no. fresh star anise, like even like fennel seed. There's a there's a quality to it right on the back end. That's now now wit now Whitsky, I'm gonna call you Whitsky, by the way, from now on. <laughs> uh what what are you getting on your 29 as uh you know when we're talking about because you have one that's a little bit older than yeah. ours? I'm gonna say 29 out of all all four actually has changed the least. Okay. Um, I would I would hmm. say, you know, like some of the uh vanilla notes that you're getting. Um mine might be a little bit richer, maybe like a French vanilla. 
Um, I'm yeah. definitely getting some of those uh, mature things. If anything, the only thing that's changed about this one is the sweetness level. The sweetness level of this one has gone up, um, oh. but the flavors are all consistent. Like everything oh, you guys yeah. are tasting is pretty much what I'm tasting. I mean, that root beer, getting that vanilla, uh, you know, getting a little bit of that like fennel, like uh, slightly savory, but not like heavy on the savory. It's more of like a Christmas yeah. savory, right? Yes, exactly. You're getting like, like a, a like little a, bit of that Christmas savory. Yeah, there's like this Christmas, uh, like this Christmas cake thing happening, like the the fruit cakes that my Italian, uh, you know, family would bring over that nobody would eat. Yeah. They would, they, would, they would stay on the top of the, oh, thank you so much. They would throw it on the top of the fridge. They would stay there. And they would stay on top of the fridge all year long. <laughs> no, yeah. It never came uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so this one also, uh, just as a note, this one is a, a half barrel. Um, so this one was uh, one of those that, you know, it was probably a leaker at some point. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up with either a significant amount of angel share or a little bit of leakage. And uh, this is a half barrel. So um, if, if this one is to be picked, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at a yield of probably 80 bottles, maybe. Oh, um, so, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a little dude. bit of a lower yield. Scott Scott, and I always have a knack for picking short barrels. I'm just saying. Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Man, I mean, it, we, uh, we picked, it was we a real picked, kick-ass one. We picked two old elks, and both of them were short barrels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the Short Barrel Whiskey Club, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we're. Uh, we yeah, that's the, good. We do the picking and you do the skipping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a really that's a really nice whiskey right yeah, there. Twenty nine. I mean, I or already I love twenty nine over twenty eight. Twenty nine is delicious. Yeah, I mean, I think you can yeah. see like the richness and the complexity, the finish, yeah. the, the a little little bit more heat, a little more oak in, on this one too. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see if you have any questions. Uh, Mash and Journey Bugaboo is drinking from Trevor. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Richie Z, he cracked a Bull Run uh, Temperance Straight Barrel Strength. Oh, very cool. Mm. What's the uh, Richie Z? Tell us what's the Temperance? What's that one? I'm curious. Um, let's see here. People saying hi. One, one thing I'm always curious about. So wit, when you're, I'm gonna call you Witsky. I like that better. It's a little easier to say. Yeah, it's all about. It's all about Mr. Witsky. So, so when you're, when you're, so when you're not drinking anything from ASW, so in terms of your palate, you know, what is yeah. kind of your, what's your little go-to outside of uh, ASW? Yeah, no doubt. So uh, originally I was a scotch drinker. Scotch was my gateway into whiskey. Uh, a lot of people in the United States, you know, it's, it's bourbon. Uh, but for me, I fell in love with scotch, specifically PD scotch. Um, you know, Lafroy 10 was my first real big, like, man, that is a different whiskey and that is a unique flavor profile. And that kind of got, got me into it. Uh, from there though, I've definitely fallen in love with bourbon. Uh, I would say, you know, a lot, a lot of my favorite bourbons are going to be, uh, wild Turkey products. I love, okay. uh, <laughs> any, any of the Russell stuff, man. Uh, the WB Saffle is actually one of my favorite whiskeys and that one's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to find the whiskey barons, but that one is a, just a real kick-ass, like good Turkey juice. So See, whiskey, yeah, I like that funk See, whiskey, stuff. This, whiskey, this is the only time, this is the second time in on my chat. I already love you, man. See, <laughs> right here. Turkey. But I, I could see, though, like, Lafroy will either make you fucking run from whiskey or will make you want to embrace the shit out of it. Oh, that's, yeah. That's what Lafroy will do to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a, yeah. I'm, on my social media, I have, I have uh, this uh, Lafroy post I've been sitting on. I just, I haven't posted it. My buddy Kevin shot it and it's a, uh, it's a real kick-ass photo, but it, it really ties some of my hobbies together. So another one of my hobbies is uh, skateboarding, and uh, I love skateboarding. But when you think about Lafroy, the flavor profile is like skateboarding. Skateboarding, it's like asphalt, Band-Aid, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, salt. Like, yeah, yeah like, it, yeah, it tastes like skateboarding. So that, maybe uh, that's why I love it. <laughs> here's, a, here's, a, here's a cool question for you. William and, uh, and the Hawk, we'll, we'll get to uh, – we're moving on here in number 30. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kind of nose that one. DL says, is there any advice that you wish you have had when you were starting out? It's a good question for whiskey. When I was starting out, uh, in whiskey or making whiskey, uh, I, starting I can out, answer both. Start, starting out in whiskey. Yeah. Starting out in whiskey. Um, so really for me, I think the biggest thing I, I come from a beverage background, I work in the coffee industry for eight years. So I was already really in tune with my palate. And I think one of the biggest things that you can do with anything in drinking, you know, like 
when I started getting into whiskey, uh, I didn't come in thinking like I knew a lot about, you know, just because I had worked in the beverage industry and thinking that I knew a lot about like the whiskey palette and what things should taste like. So I asked a shit ton of questions and that's really why Justin, the master distiller, um, really gravitated me towards me. Cause you know, I'd ask, why does this taste like this? Like what is making this taste like this? And you know, not, there's no dumb questions. So like if there's anything, just ask as many questions as you can, you know, just reading a label on a whiskey sometimes isn't enough, you know, reach out, ask questions, uh, learn more so then you can experience more and understand why you're tasting certain things. And, you know, if you're getting a flavor that's different, if like William over here is getting a different flavor than Jason, like that's totally fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone's palates, you know, they, they taste from experiences. When you're tasting something and you say it tastes like something else, you're not tasting some, you're not actually tasting uh, blood orange in your glass. It's whiskey but maybe you've had an experience with a blood orange yeah. that reminds you of that whiskey. So just if, if your flavor notes aren't what other people's flavor notes, that's fine. People are just remembering yeah. an experience in that glass. So just ask questions, you know, don't be afraid to say like what you're tasting uh, and taste as many things as you can. So. Great. Absolutely. Amazing advice. Uh, real quick, yeah. shout out to uh, Tyler deputy. Um, he's uh, he's recovering from COVID. So, Hope you're no. hope you're feeling get, better, Tyler. Yeah, uh, get better, buddy. Yeah, get better, and uh, thanks for uh, checking in tonight. Oh man. Uh, yeah, so hope hope, hope 30, the palate's good, man. So so thirty is again. It seems this one has even gotten a little bit sweeter to me. Yeah. It's very sweet on the nose, William. What are you getting on this one? To me, it's almost like if you combined it, the nose is a twenty-eight and twenty-nine because I'm <laughs> getting just I'm getting a slight citrus, not near as much as twenty-eight. But I'm also getting like the vanilla and like the root beer and everything from yeah. 29. But then on the palate, it seems like I'm getting a lot more of the rice spice on the palate. You sure that you sure that isn't your dump cup, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dump cup. Yeah, I do. No, I. You, I you told, do not want to take a. You don't ever want to take a split from the dump cup. I'll tell you. I totally, I totally, I totally agree. This is going now. When we were talking about twenty nine, and how we were getting a little bit of the savory, like a touch of it, I feel like we're getting a lot more of the savory now on thirty. You're getting a lot of sweet and savory now. A little yeah, bit, maybe a little, maybe a little more pastry, kind of a little doughiness to it. A little sure. doughy, but but the uh, the um, yeah, the savory notes are coming on. It's a little bit more herbal. And some of that uh, that spice, the rye spice, and the yeah. it's got a little bit more of a of a bite to it and a lingering spice on it, especially yeah. on the finish. I mean, 20, 20, uh, 29 had a nice finish, but I feel like thirty, it's got this long lingering spice going on. Yeah, yeah, this one's gonna hit definitely the most rye out of all of them um, yeah. so far, and this one definitely hits more of those traditional American whiskey notes. Uh, the oak tannins actually come a little bit forward on this, which personally me like that's it, it, it's a beautiful whiskey but with with duality the oak tannins really aren't the most traditional a hey, lj i work i work with uh i work with lj so he, <laughs> he's, he's a, a he, skateboarder. <laughs> yeah uh, lj's over at uh, asw oh. yeah like like for me i would say this drinks a little bit more like closer to a traditional like bourbon style like it's yeah there's more of a bourbon profile <clears throat> for me on, on this one versus like Definitely, I mean, definitely 29. So. Nice, Todd. Yeah. What's uh, funny about uh, duality, all we have to do is, uh, you know, bump up the, the the amount of rye that we use by like 10 pounds and you have yourself a rye whiskey. So we, yeah. we can move this from uh, 50 to 51% and we're drinking a rye whiskey. So this, I mean, it really swings both ways. Like if you're, some barrels you're tasting and you're like, man, that is like malty and that reminds me of like you know some scotches i've had and then others you taste it and you're like man this really drinks like a like a kick-ass rye whiskey um so i mean you this one this one definitely this barrel specifically swings more towards those rye flavor profiles and the traditional yeah. american yeah, yeah for sure i would have thought like definitely like drinks like for me i was thinking mm. like that high rye definitely mm -hmm. that high rye there's just something about that yeah, I think that that nice little spice kick is coming through. You got like some black peppercorns there. Yeah, definitely. It um, like it hits like I don't know for you guys, but like right in the mid to the back of the palate, that like tingling, like spice 
is right there. Yeah, it's, it's almost it's almost effervescent, like a like a carbonated yeah. beverage, a little bit. Yeah, I like that's this. Bubble, like this, it's got like this bubbliness to it almost. I know yeah. that sounds. I know that sounds weird, but it just it gives you. It's like I'm just like I'm chewing on pop rocks a little bit. See, see, that's where I think like 29 drink like it was a short barrel, like where it was refined, it was rich. Like this is drinking much brighter. Yeah, you know, like yeah. a lot more. Like, yeah, that's uh, boy, those are those are different. That's what do you sure. what are you thinking, Will? I don't know between 28 and, or 29 and 30. I'm having a hard time picking which or one I like better because they're they're yeah. so different, but they're both really good. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it's like I know. Uh, Whiskey has this uh, has has 30 finit uh, change for you too much, or is it still? More along that rise, it got a little bit sweeter. Is it as this one's? This one's gotten more oaky, and the oak tannins have actually kind of like uh, pushed through a little heavy on this one. Um, I would say that probably this one, it's it's peak bottling might have been when you guys got your sample. Uh, I would I, honestly, I mean, it, it hasn't gone downhill in quality. I'm just saying for it being duality, right? Right now, like the oak tannins have kind of come up a little bit yeah. on this one. I mean, it drinks like a beautiful like. American whiskey. And honestly, there's so many people that are like, give me the oak. I want the oak. Yeah, so yeah. this is like, this is that answer. You know, this is, this is the, give me the oak. Okay. Uh, it's definitely but, drier. It's definitely got this dryness factor to it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. A little, yeah. little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd say 29 is the sweetest so far, but 30 is the oakiest. Man, uh, 29 is fucking badass. Uh, shout out to Todd, loving the stream, enjoying my only ASW bottle fiddler, single barrel from Spray uh, Sprayberry Bottle Shop, number 409, 114 proof, fantastic. Uh, awesome, yeah. Todd. Glad the you big cartel. <laughs> shout out yeah. to the Sprayberry Bottle Shop. They are, uh, the, Bridge is the owner there, and he's really been uh, a big supporter of our single barrel program. Hmm. One of the first guys to kind of give us a shot and not only buy a single barrel bourbon, but say, hey, I want a single barrel, single malt. And, you know, doing stuff that's different that than, you know, what most American liquor stores are doing. Most American liquor stores are like, I'm going to get my bourbon barrel pick. I'm going to get my rye barrel pick. Yeah. But Bridge from Sprayberry wanted to say, hey, I'm going to get a malt whiskey barrel pick. And, you know, that's really kick ass. And well, that's yeah, something I mean, that we want to be doing, you know. So, yeah, I think that's what we're looking at, too, as far as, you know, what Scott and I talked about. Just, um, you know, because we've gotten, you know, is there any chance you guys could you know, trying to figure out how to get a, uh, a a single barrel from Scotland, it's pretty damn impossible or pretty hard. You have <laughs> to, yeah, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to make that happen. But I mean, <clears throat> you get to try some of these American single malts, and hopefully, twenty twenty two, we get a uh, we get a an actual legal definition here for American single malt. That bring it, we need it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> We're super. We're we're super looking forward to that. Um, our uh, our yeah. pick that we're gonna do of the uh, the um. Irish style whiskey that you guys do. So we appreciate that. Hey, yeah. come on. Come on. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Do y'all oh, actually man. do picks of that often? Because I know the only one I got was from the fifth anniversary. I don't think I've ever actually seen a pick of that in stores. So no no one has done a done a pick. It's pretty much one of those things that uh, you know, like it's asked and you shall receive type of thing. Like most of our whiskeys, like we have like our available that we you know, our sales guys go out and pitch to some local liquor stores and say, hey, here's what we're selling. But uh, if someone comes in and they're like, yo, can we pick this? We're like, sure. Put, us on, put us on the list. Put us on the list. I'm telling you. <laughs> Come on down, hang out with me, pick a barrel, whatever you want, you know. Definitely. So we'll make it happen. So, yeah, so, so this, the Bob the Hardwood pick that Will let me have from Sprayberry Bottle Shop in Chattanooga was ridiculous. It was so good. I have oh. that same pick, and yes, it's amazing. And I actually, oh. the funny thing is, I'm gonna be at Sprayberry tomorrow because I gotta, I'm gonna drive up there and pick something up. Because to me, it's about like a 45 minute drive. But his picks are, he he does good picks. Well, you're gonna have to message me. Let me know what they got over there. <laughs> no problem. All right, yeah. let's go. Let's go to uh, number. So we go from 28, 29, 30. We're jumping to 147. Um, what's I also interesting about 147. <laughs> is that it's got the lowest entry proof. So they were, it was kind of interesting. We were getting the entry proofs oh, on these. So 109, 109, 109. Then we get to 0, 147, and oh, it's 103. Now, I don't know if Witt wants to go in on why we, it's a lower entry proof for this one, but. Yeah. 
Uh, so we're a small craft distillery, so we actually have a range of barrel entry proof. So depending on our yield and distillation, uh, what we do if we're making a, you know, we're going to make duality for three or four weeks before we move on to make something else. So we don't actually make multiple things at a time. We'll spend a month making duality, then a month making rye, then a month making bourbon, and a month making something else. So sometimes we'll get down to our last run and we're going to put in the barrel and we're like, well, we have an, an awkward amount in our final run. You know, we've been moving it to our barreling tank and we have to cut this one slightly differently so that fits in all the barrels. So because we're a small craft distillery, we're only doing like eight to 10 barrels at a time. Is, that, is, uh, it, is this a good is this a good one? Is that what that yeah, means? Yeah, that's a super chat again. We got the old Copy super here. chat. Ah, oh, the super chat. Nice. What are the chances of cast rank single malts or cast rank Irish? Um, yeah, so we actually uh, we do cast rank single malts. Uh, we actually used to do all of our single malts at 92 proof. Uh, so the 46% ABV was just a really good uh, for us to cut it and have a consistent product. But then we started doing a few barrel picks and just selling a few single barrels of our single malts. Uh, and we, we started bottling them at cast drink and people just really preferred those cast drink single malts. Uh, so that was kind of where we went from there. Uh, a little bit about our single malt. So one of our single malts actually won um, a double gold at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition and then went on to place first in the uh, craft whiskey category for uh, for all the craft whiskey in the world. So it won best in class craft whiskey 2020. So, uh, you know, we go around saying like, yeah, this was the best craft whiskey in the world in 2020, but people were so busy with everything happening that they forgot, they forgot about, uh, forgot about us, but <laughs> dude, that no, that, that no, yeah, was that, that, was, that Mar- was, was that the Maris yeah, Otter? It was the Maris Otter. Yeah, it was the Maris Otter. And, and Jason, I, can I think, I, I, think I sent you a sample of that. <laughs> that did you, uh, amazing. Jason, did you get a sample of the Maris Otter? I, I, I forget. I wonder. Yeah, you did. You did send me a sample of it and it's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Holy crap! 147. Yeah, yeah, the no, the nose on this is absolutely incredible. The is first it, thing I got like right away was this like mint chocolate chip kind of note or something. I, I'm still. I got a little bit of that that root beer too on this one a little bit. Yep, too. I got that. Yep. I am getting the little bit of mint. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like overpowering mint by any means, mm, but it's definitely mm. there. This is probably the best combination so far of. Like being able to smell both the rye and the malt in here, because you get the mint from the rye, and you also get the sweetness and the like the root beeriness of the of the malt, and a little bit of the chocolate too. I, I wonder if I wonder if like the the richness of this is where that that malted rye is starting to kind of shine in this one. This is like really it, it feels like more more oily. Like this is similar to twenty nine. Like twenty nine and this one forty seven are. Yeah, Scott, uh, I was you made a, such a good call right there with the oiliness. This is so syrupy and rich on the palate. Mm-hmm. This has this like is, a like a clinginess to it. Is this a short barrel too? Because it, it has a a lot of the stuff that twenty nine has. Yeah. This is this is actually the fullest barrel of them all. So this one has oh, the most God. whiskey in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Yeah, this one. Yeah. So this one. Uh, wow. This one specifically it- was probably from the the peak of like that when we were saying we were getting good barrels from a cooperage. Yeah. This one, I mean specifically, the cooperage really kicked ass on this one. This was like when we were like, oh yeah, we got to get a lot more of these barrels. Like they're so good. Um, and this one like really like shows like it hits that red yeah. layer and gets all that sweetness out of the red layer. And- it's pulled it out. It's highlighted all the grains. Like you're getting. That you know, you said a little bit of that spicy mintiness from the mm-hmm. rye, and then you're getting like some of the multi qualities. I'm kind of getting almost like a like a very like sweet like snickerdoodle cookie. Like you're getting a yeah, little bit of can, like yeah, cinnamon, a really, but then a yeah. lot of sweetness. Oh my god, to- snickerdoodle cookie is such a spot on call. Wow, it, is this the one that you hid in the corner, or was it the short barrel that you hid? <laughs> yeah, my my I'll say after you guys pick, I'll say after you guys. Yeah, my my guess, my my guess is it's either going to be twenty nine or one forty seven. That that be yeah, my guess. It, it's it's got to be. Yeah, one this this one forty seven is ridiculous. Yeah, when you said like the snickerdoodle, like in my mind, I was thinking of like this um, 
like the uh, chocolate chip cookie dough kind of ice cream or something like that was like there's yeah. something that's decadent See, about it. When, that's what I got immediately on the nose. I was getting cookie dough, but I thought I was crazy. Yeah. So I'm glad you guys are talking about. Oh, you're, oh, you're still crazy. You're still crazy. I'm still crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah, that's God. really nice. Sorry, I had to pour one of the picks I had and actually do a taste between those two. Yeah, I like, actually I, have I, a con I have a control batch too. I, I, I should have sent you guys a control batch, but then I was afraid you'd like that one the best. So, <laughs> well, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I kind of I poured this duality that I have here um, just to just to kind of compare. This one, this one got the one in this bottle that I have here is really sweet. At least yeah. on, the, on the nose, but my goodness, man, that one forty-seven that finish is long on that. Dude, well. the finish uh, we haven't talked about the finish on one forty-seven yet. But it's, <laughs> it's super, it's super oily. I, I got to go it's back like, to twenty. You know, I think are we going to go back through them? Or are we going to like eliminate things? What do you think? I, I, listen, I, I'm I'm good to eliminate twenty-eight and thirty. Yeah, I, I can do it. Agree. I I agree. Yeah, so we're gonna eliminate twenty. It's between twenty nine and it's between uh, and and zero forty and one forty seven. So, yeah. I mean, we have root beer and snickerdoodle. Like, what the fuck? Man, I mean, I guess <laughs> I guess the thing is, like, Jason. I guess here's the other thing to like consider is like if that one barrel is only if that one's only gonna get us about eighty bottles. Holy well, uh, well, whiskey. What is a what is a full? So that if, if we decide to go with the 147, how many bottles do you think that would yield? Uh, probably 150. I mean, these are small barrels. You have to you have to understand they're not your full 53 gallon barrels. So standard barrel, you'll get about 200 bottles. This one, you'll probably get closer to 150, maybe 130. And, and um, I and, then, and I you know we I like that for especially for a uh, you know a craft yeah. distillery pick because yeah. you know. Yep. Shit, man, it's gonna be hard. I know, I know. William is kind of comparing there. Look at it; he's so <laughs> silent. It's like it's like when you go out to eat with somebody and and they're every every everyone gets their food and then nobody talks. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's really the way it should be. Like yeah. you talk, the food comes in, you eat, then you have a couple more drinks, you talk, then you leave. Man, I love the nose on uh, twenty nine so much. Uh, so, so, so standard, we usually send out, I think a hundred and we, we guarantee for, for most of our single barrels, I can't guarantee on 29, but on 147, I can guarantee at least 110. Uh, there's a chance that we can get closer to 120, 125, 150 might've been a little bit generous. Now that I'm thinking about it. Cause we, <laughs> yeah. you know, like we, we all, we always lose a little bit, you know. Justin and I got to take a bottle home. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Fuck, twenty nine is so good. I know. Shit. Mm. I like it all. I'm not going to talk shit about my whiskey. <laughs> like Please. right now with me, I'm leaning on the nose. I would say twenty nine. But on the palate, I, I I'd have to lean toward the one forty seven. I that's that's where I'm at. I'm right with William there. The the nose on twenty nine I love, but I'm not gonna sit here and smell the fucking whiskey all night. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I completely agree. So when you when you talk about complexity, viscosity, finish zero uh, forty seven and one forty seven is, I mean the nose on one forty seven isn't no slouch either. But man, when you, damn. One forty-seven, man, still has like that root beer float, the snickerdoodle, the cinnamon, but it's the viscosity is what's winning me. Oh, it's so oily, and that's weird because twenty-nine being a short barrel, you would figure it would be more viscous, but it's not. Yeah, everybody, everybody in the chat wants us to get both or blend them somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I all all I know, all, I mean, I I love them both. I mean, I I would, I would absolutely hate to walk away from barrel twenty nine. That's my thought. Like that is fucking good whiskey right there. I mean, one for I love one forty seven, but I don't know what it is about twenty nine. But it is. It's it's actually funny to hear you say that since you're, you're the guy that's 
you know, a little standoffish about malt, but I would say 29 hits the malt character a little harder than the 147. So yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I that's agree. surprising. Yeah, look at look at yeah. Scott's a Scott's a he's, he, he's he, a malt guy now. It's it's bridging it's bridging the gap, and you don't you don't even know it. You're gravitating <laughs> towards you the malt even, heavy. You don't even know it's we're we're yeah. watching a transformation of Scotty live right here. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I don't know if I'd go. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I mean they're they're both they're both. <laughs> They're both excellent. They're both excellent barrels, and now yeah. it just comes down to like, and we're I mean, we're nitpicking at this point. Yeah. Hey, you guys, say say the word. I'll I'll set one aside for you and come back and get it later, or get them both now. Whatever you want. So. Shit, man. I don't know that that twenty nine being a short barrel. If you set it to the side, I don't even know what it's it gonna be. Real short. <laughs> it's gonna get real short. We better we better duct tape that shit so no more leaks. <laughs> I don't know. If you were to take that one and put it in another barrel, I think oh, that would yeah, get would, way too would, oaky if you were to do that. I was about to say that that would mess up the flavor profile. You, you'd kind of mess up what you got. I mean, it would give it introduce new flavors, but I mean, it would definitely change it significantly. So, yeah, do a duality double malt toasted. Damn. <laughs> Going back and forth, though, man, I'm. When man, you take one step back to the other, man, twenty. There's something about twenty nine. I keep going back to it. It's it's so like it's so like rich. It's almost like that one that you want to just. You feel like you feel like you're that dude like on the Titanic where you're like off to like the gentleman's room and like with a really good whiskey and like this is what they would have given you, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so oh. I mean, I would love to say let's take both, but I, I don't remember. We don't. We have Sealbox as a distributor uh, yeah. for this, I think, but you know, it's not like we have a, a line on them right now to be like, "Hey, can yeah. we get both?" So we can't just make that call. How, um, how 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 soon? Like, if if we decide on like one of them, and we and we decide we wanted to maybe, you know, we could talk to we could talk to Blake and see like his thoughts or whatever. Also, yeah. but um, yeah. yeah, whatever you, know, you guys want to do. If, if realistically, we're gonna get let's say 110 of 147 and like what, maybe 70 or 80 bottles on 29. I mean, Jesus. I don't yeah, know. So, um, I mean, you're going to be looking at closer to like a, 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 what you're getting in a 53 gallon barrel yeah. yield about 200 with, with both of them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so, I mean, whatever you guys want to do, we'll, we'll make it happen. So, um, you know, we're, we're actually, we're pretty short on duality. So I might be over promising, but you know what, if I say it now, they can't take it back. So <laughs> LJ is still watching. So LJ text me right now. If that's not cool. All right, so, what's the, uh, so what, so what's the one that you would like to keep aside? Oh, me personally. I, I mean, both of these, I think are beautiful and like ready to be bottled now. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've tasted them like even, even like a, a month later, like honestly, like I, I could sit, sit on one for another two months, but I'd probably feel like it needs to be bottled, you know, before six months. Um, you know, I think 28 could send the barrel a little bit longer. I think 30, you know, like ne needs to maybe be blended in with a, with a bigger batch. Um, yeah. but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that 29 and 147, they both need to be bottled soon, but I mean, I like it all for different reasons. So, uh, you know, so I, I can look at every single one of these and see like a really good, like use for it. So. I mean, I mean, I mean, for me, I think when I'm when I'm thinking of the flavor profile that I think would go for our patrons, something that's universally um, loved, it's it's going to be twenty. It's going to be twenty nine. Twenty nine yeah. is root beer float chocolate. It's so delicious. <laughs> to all the patrons, here you guys go. This is awesome. Here's ninety barrels for your ninety bottles for you. Well, I mean, uh, that's but look, I mean, listen, even if we went with 130, uh, the 147, yeah, I mean, I mean, 70 something bottles, we're still only getting 100, maybe 100 bottles of that one, uh, yeah. So, so, so realistically, I would say that you could probably expect like 60 to 80 bottles from 29, and you could probably expect uh, 110 to 120 bottles of 147. All so. right, so let's do this. Um, 147 is friggin' delicious. Um, I mean, Scott, what do, what do you want to do? Man, I'm so I am like so torn, and I didn't think <laughs> I was gonna I didn't I didn't think I was gonna be like in this kind of like situation. situation. <laughs> like I, I love them, I love them both for like different reasons, but 
man, there's just something about 29 that is speaking to me. I don't know what it is. I just love, I love the balance, the complexity of, of what it is. William, what about you? If you could, uh, if you could have one of them, William, what would, what would you go after? William's see, smiling me, already. He doesn't even know. <laughs> see me, me speaking from the Patreon side. Yeah, I want both. Like I'm having a real hard time of picking between the two. Jesus, this guy. Who invited this guy? <laughs> it's tough, man. It's super tough. Yeah, they're they're I mean, both. They're both really good, but. I think the hardest thing to decide is they're both actually really different. Like it's, it's, it's one of those things that when we do duality and when we blend it out, like we try to pull barrels that are like 147 yeah. and barrels are like 29 to like bring together yeah. what the standard duality is. Like we're getting really two different spectrums. Like one of these, we're getting more of that, like traditional American no big Oak, a lot of rye, a lot of sweetness. The other one we're getting like that root beer, uh, maybe some floral stuff. So yeah. I mean, yeah. All right, so so let's do this. Crazy. Let's, um, I, I love the I, I think the malted rye on 147 is like really shining. Like that nice little minty note, that chocolatey. It's nice. Yeah, and, and it's got that yeah. really nice finish to it as well. Yeah. Um, now, yeah, I'll say one 147. So like I was saying earlier, 29 has changed the least, but 147 I would definitely say like is like rounded out to like I mean it, it, this one uh, this one actually is is the one that's a little bit older, um, but I mean even in the past few months, like I feel like it's gotten like that big Oak sweetness, not those Oak tannins, just like that yeah. Oak sweetness. And there's yeah, oils is, that you're really talking nice. about. It's really it coming really from nice. that age. So, all right. So, so let's do this because look, even mine has little Oak bits in it. Oh my God. It's so amazing. Um, <laughs> I think what we should do is uh, get grab 147 because it's got the most bottles for our patrons. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, don't, don't, don't think we're just picking 147 because it's the most bottles. Like, try, it is a really damn good Dude, whiskey it's, period. It's delicious. It's really good. It's and really then good. we'll, we'll talk to Blake and see if he would be up for us grabbing uh, 29 since it is, since it is a short barrel. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a special release, you know, you, you do it later as a special release or whatever. So. Yeah, we could we could kind of do the one. We could get the other one here. We could put out the snickerdoodle. Then we could put out the root beer float. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dessert, we'll just man. call it. We'll just call it Fat Kid's Dream, right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put. You're gonna I'm gonna put. After that, I'm gonna call this the Goonies pick. I'm gonna put chunk on both of them. <laughs> <laughs> the Goonies. Oh um, man. Man, yeah, yeah so but I, I think with my palate, I I prefer I do prefer 147. Hey, look, look. But I, I, I would not want to get rid of 29 because, like, they're, they're... – Yeah, look at LJ. We can hold one barrel until Blake gives you all the go. Okay. Uh, I... L, L, LJ is the guy that talks <laughs> upstairs. So he, he he's he's the guy that talks to us in the back and then relates it to the guys upstairs. So – all right, so I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna tell LJ, LJ if somehow somewhere. like someone if we don't if we're not able to take 29, I'm just gonna buy it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so uh good. all right, so so let's so let's so which one would you rather bottle immediately? And I'm asking William and the hawk, which one would you guys want first? Oh man. <laughs> yeah, this is tough. This is like the one of the toughest damn decisions I've had, to be honest. Oh, come on, man. Let's go. No, it if I would say first, I would probably lean more 29 because we know that here, if we wait like a month, yeah. there's going to be less bottles. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, so, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good, that's a good deciding that's a good factor. Way to look. So, like what, what needs to go now? Yeah, so yeah. let's, so let's do this. Let's grab 29 right now, okay. bottle, yeah. bottle it, let's package it up. And then we'll talk to Blake about 147 and see if uh, he'd be okay with uh, us grabbing that one too. Uh, this way yeah. we could have two separate releases because I really feel like everyone, all our patrons who have been supporting us, they they need to try both of these. Yeah, and, these uh, are right. really good whiskey. Yeah, I mean, and, they're, they're really they're both real so different. And, so. and they're and they're yeah, they're both so. And just to and and just for just for us to kind of get the word of ASW out there, I think this would this would do. The both of these are such a great example of what ASW is crafting. I think I think the uh, the world needs to taste these. So. Because I think if Appreciate you were to told me those were two different whiskeys, I think I would believe you. Like yeah. they're similar, but they are different. I, I yeah. agree. I agree a hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna take the twenty nine for sure. Uh, first, Oops. 
That's going to be Sounds our good. number one. Uh, we'll talk once we get with Blake and we talk to him about our uh, the other pick. We'll uh, we'll we'll pencil in the zero one forty seven. Um, but yeah, that twenty nine needs to be bottled now and tasted by everyone because it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So we'll make it happen. We'll make All it right. happen. Yeah, it like, so, looks like the, uh, so, can, so can you so can you disclose now of the of the ones that we have what your special one would have been? Yeah. I, I so the one that I set aside, I tasted a while ago, 147. I set aside and I was like, this one, uh so it's actually it's a it's a year older than all the other three. So mm. it's a four year old that should have kind of been bottled already. And uh, you know, I kind of set aside, I was like, oh no, this is a pretty special duality barrel. And part of that was because it was so different. I would say 29 maybe hits those multi-characteristics, like more like yeah. how duality really tastes. But 147, yeah. I mean, that, that was just a special, different, like sweet, big oak. Um, and it was really from the, the height of like the Cooperage too. So 147 sitting in the barrel any longer is not going to hurt it because, I mean, that is really good, uh, like Coopered barrel. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's we, only going to get we, better. We, Way more citrus has come out in 147 by far. 147 drinks like a beautifully aged burrata oh, almost. I, it's I, I, I feel I feel like whatever this I feel like whatever decision I'm making is like the wrong one right now. You're just talking yourself in circles at this point. I literally see, am. See, I disagree. I think no matter what decision you make is the right one because they're both amazing. Yeah. Hey, the optimist. The optimist. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That William's the ultimate optimist because he's gonna have both yeah. of those. Uh we'll get we'll get William on the label somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then William, yeah. I'm gonna have you by the distillery soon. Uh again, uh he came by the distillery this past week and uh I'll, I'll let you taste some of these more like updated ones uh sometime, you know, just to just to taste them. I was gonna do it at the distillery, but you know, child care, man, it's like seventy five bucks to like go to work. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Just like I said, I, yeah. I I completely understand, but I have no problem driving up there. For me, as long as traffic's not horrible in downtown Atlanta, I can make it in thirty minutes. I ain't worried about it. Oh yeah. It's just gas money, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes. Shit, that's close. All right, guys. So it looks like the first one we have coming at you is gonna be the duality mass and journey root beer float, baby. Oof. Is that are we going with 29 first? 29. Well, 29's got to be bottled. Yeah, it's I, yeah. Barrel before yeah. we All right. before we lose any more whiskey out of that barrel, it's got to get bottled. Um, yeah, and, and, then, and uh, I, I will say it's not actively leaking. It was just one of those that you know I was leaking at the time. So. <laughs> it's not actively leaking. Not actively <laughs> leaking. We're not. Close the blow we're not wall losing that thing. Time. That blow <laughs> wall. Oh shit. And then uh, 147, which has a little bit more age on, which is just delicious. Um, I don't know if you guys could see this, but oh, I literally, man, I literally man. have, I literally have little oak char bits in here. Oh my god, it's amazing! It's the, yeah, these are really, yeah. these are really good whiskeys. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I know. Uh, I'll, I'll shoot Blake a message tomorrow, and uh, actually tonight because it's still early, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get these in motion, and. Um, I mean, what can I say? Wit, I, I really appreciate you pulling these samples and uh, yeah. you know, kind of. I I forgot who who actually was the the Chad. Forgot, Chad, Chad pulled the first samples. So that's, Chad yeah, the first yeah. Samples. yeah, yeah. He's our marketing guy, and he's been working on some like out of state stuff. I'm really I'm not I'm not a sales guy. I'm a production guy, you know. And more recently, I've like been doing some of these like uh, video chats and stuff. To, you know, Justin, Justin's awesome, man, but uh, him and technology are not great. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he's, uh, he's well, kicking ass I mean, and making whiskey. So <laughs> well, definitely uh, I'll shoot a message to Chad, say thanks for uh, pulling these and uh, and sending these along because these are just these are ridiculous. This is yeah. this is for great. This is for great whiskey. Whiskey, this is for you. Woo -woo. Hey. <laughs> Um, Todd says I need to come over to ASW, have a few pours of whiskey, and check out the distillery. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you do. Yeah, these yeah. are gonna be good. these are gonna be really good picks, guys, and I can't wait for you guys to enjoy them. Um, Man, those are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, anyone that's in the Atlanta area, I mean, honestly, when, whenever I'm mashing, uh, I'm mashing by myself. Hit me up if you say, "Hey, I watched you on the mashing drum," or "I know Jason," or whatever. I would love to, you know, give you a little personal tour or whatever. I mean, if if there's a bunch of people. You know, I might have to pump the brakes a little bit, but if I get a few people <laughs> just coming down to Atlanta, uh, wanting to hang out and come in the back with me, I'll show you around. I'm more than happy to. Me and William hung out the other night, and it was a it was a good time. We came to the back, tasted a little little something out of the barrel. So 
And, uh, yeah. and, real, and real... I had an amazing time. That was that that was amazing. And I I I'll be there this Saturday too. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm real not going to be, be there this weekend, but and real, real, uh, real quick guys for the patrons that are watching, uh, Scott and I just solidified another pick today, which we can announce. Yeah. Um, yeah. we are picking or blending possibly. We're not really sure yeah. what we're doing yet, but we are going to be picking our own. That's misleading. I don't know if I want to show this, but it's not a gray label, but yeah, don't, okay. don't even, don't even show it. Cause you're going to be like, how well, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's the brand. We are picking a barrel, uh, craft spirits, uh, pick, um, nice. it could be a single barrel. It could be a blend. We're not sure what's happening yet, but we got the, uh, okay today. Woo! <laughs> so it should be a, uh, that's another one we have coming from the match and journey whiskey club for a uh, 2022. So Good hell stuff. yeah. Stuff. So, um, all right. Hey. Well, Witsky, uh, thanks so much for uh, for hanging out tonight and tasting yeah. these along with us and kind of being our uh, our ASW Yoda, being so you know, yeah. and, and uh, telling us uh, what's what. And we we are so excited for both of these. Um, yeah, we are. William, man, thank you so much for your expertise with ASW. <laughs> we're gl we're glad that we uh, kind of lined up with what you liked. Um, and I and I love that you're always looking out for the patrons and saying I want both. So good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Alex, I gotta think about Alex, the Alex that Alex said to me is like, is this is one of those the chocolate mousse? <laughs> uh, Scott, anything you want to sign off with, real quick? You know what? I guess I just have to say, I mean, to obviously Witsky, thanks, bro. Um, you know, appreciate you kind of taking uh, some time and going through all this stuff and sending these samples and um, you know, kind of allowing us this this <coughs> opportunity. It's it's one of the things that we were always trying to do with with everybody so is get something that's different and unique and 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 this is definitely hitting that i mean for me i'm saying that coming from a guy that doesn't have you know a lot of experience with these kinds of whiskeys and i mean they they're they're simply incredible i mean you can't say any more about it so thanks for thanks for all of this taking the time greatly appreciate it um hopefully everybody goes down to asw check out uh what they've got going on but you know to the patrons and everybody Thank you guys for all the support. We greatly appreciate everything. And, you know, you guys are what are, you know, what's allowing us to continue to do these fun things. So thank you guys. Yeah. And here's to a great kickoff to 2022 with these babies. Shit. You got it. All right. It. Uh, as we always say, it's not about the, it's not about the Witsky. It's the people <laughs> you share it with. <laughs> That's good. That's Cheers good. guys. And uh, we'll Cheers, see guys. you. Uh, we'll see you soon on here on the Mass and Drum or on uh, my bourbon journey for the next Mash and Journey barrel pick. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.